You tell me that I should try to keep my perspective objective, as if I could somehow coerce my consciousness to traverse the boundaries of my miniverse and rush unprotected into the crazy, overwhelming crush of unfiltered particles and waves with such a gaze as I've been training since I was born to avoid, and in so doing, form the very void that has become my sacred eye of the storm. Three eyes have I, to be precise, one looking back in high-definition retrovision, one now with myopia, and my third eye, my ocular oracle with sight beyond sight, the one that sees all the possible futures and fantasies of both fright and flight, and I've but barely begun to discover which buttons on my remote control do more than simply select the source, or show a picture-in-picture view of my soul. How very droll. All this you think that I should... Leave behind, somehow unzip my skin and evacuate my mind, to pick some dull, tumbled-out tissue to call the truth inside to preside over this lawless suit? That's cute. I'll just junk my judge and jury and turn to mental masturbation. Pretend I'm empty of the fury that has fueled this consternation. I'll invent an allegory so that you can have the glory from pointing out patterns and counting crooked constellations. Convert my miniverse into a universe of discourse in which you, in verse, can discover the correct course of action after discerning the source of my sad story. And then to your satisfaction, tell me which stars of mine are mere satellites to be brought down by the might of your psychic intergalactic missile while you neglect to bring your otherworldly arms to bear on the indirect issue of negotiating any potential paradox that I might reject that could shock me so badly that my clock's hands would spin madly as I'm trapped on the event horizon of the supermassive black hole at the center of this downward spiral galaxy. That's not what I meant, you say, and so I put my dictionary away and focus on being subjectively objective and not judgmentally corrective, for I see now that You're only trying to assist, and that this clenched fist of sarcasm is merely my projection to avoid any reflection on this cavernous chasm overflowing with out-of-place, interlaced, do-it-yourself furniture that's so insecure that it demands detours. I guess I could use your help to stop stumbling and stubbing toes and striking shins in the dark. The state of my home is quite humbling, so please forgive me for my earlier snark.